Warehouse or wine bar? Concert hall or home with a difference? Look around the country and see the evidence of buildings that once were places of worship and have now been converted to a host of other uses. That doesn't include many more that we don't see because the land they stood on was more attractive for redevelopment than the bricks and mortar. How many? One report predicted nearly 400 closures every year up to 2020. Others suggest more. Does it matter? Is there anything we can do about it? Sometimes we have to face the fact that times have changed. Inner cities and rural areas that supported large populations a century or so ago have found that their numbers have dwindled to only a fraction. Other forms of ministry have emerged in these areas to support them, but keeping empty church buildings open may not be the answer. Is that the whole story, that times have changed and that there's nothing more we can do about it? From our experience at Church Growth Trust, the answer to this question is emphatically no. We have seen many situations where a once thriving congregation has been reduced to a fraction of its size, and yet the opportunities for gospel outreach in the local area still remain. The reasons why this happens may vary, but in many cases the circumstances are similar. A faithful few remain, often reluctant to make the decision to close. A decision that some may even see as abandoning their post. But for reasons of age or failing health, they are personally no longer able to continue the work. For elders and trustees faced with that dilemma, is there a real alternative to the choices with which we started? Warehouse or wine bar or selling for demolition and redevelopment? We believe there is. In Leamington Spa, the local Brethren Assembly had been worshipping for many years in an old grammar school building of distinctive local character near the town centre. As the congregation aged and their numbers reduced, they had to come to the decision in 2006 to close the assembly and leave the building. But because the property was owned by Stewardship, the Christian charity from which Church Growth Trust developed, it was possible to look at alternatives to selling the property. That strategic location near the town centre meant that it was an opportunity for another church looking for a premises. Reflecting our commitment to support and encourage local congregations that are evangelical, Bible-based and independent, an agreement was reached in September 2006 with Christchurch, who now occupy the premises. It was obvious to all that the property desperately needed complete refurbishment, as the original building was damp and out of date, and the building behind was a 1960s asbestos prefab, which was literally falling down. We could see that the property had great potential which could be realised through an ambitious programme of remodelling and extension. To this end we worked with the church to make that possible. The original building was preserved and a more welcoming entrance was created at ground floor level. Upper floors were created to provide useful and attractive meeting rooms. To the rear of the building, a new extension was erected to provide a spacious room for worship. In the process, it was possible to upgrade the arrangements for access to and within the building to make it more welcoming for people with disabilities, putting into practice the church's desire to open their doors to all sections of the community. 
Working with Church Growth Trust was a real pleasure, particularly working with Giles, because even though this was a commercial arrangement, it was clear right from the outset that we were both after the same thing, and that was to take a church building that was literally falling down and restore it and turn it into what was the best church facility that we could make it. In addition, a church like ours would never have had the financial resource to be able to take on a project like this. But Church Growth Trust owned the building, they have money to put into restoring buildings like this, and they lent our church money as well for doing the interior decoration. To be honest, if it wasn't for Church Growth Trust, I think we'd still be meeting in a school dining room. As another example, but in contrast to Leamington Spa, Glebe Hall Harrow is a case where, though they had similar challenges in terms of a declining congregation, the approach that they took was very different. Over the years, Harrow in northwest London has experienced significant levels of immigration, and the local population includes many people from the Indian subcontinent. Amongst them, were groups of Christians who wished to meet for worship, but not all of whom would have been at ease in an English-speaking congregation. The Brethren Assembly had been working with a small group who had a heart to reach Gujarati people, and therefore, when the Assembly decided to close, Church Growth Trust was delighted to agree with the new church, New Life Suwata Sangat, for them to rent the building. We saw this as entirely appropriate to allow a group trying to reach a particular ethnic group when the local population is 80% Gujarati. New Life Swata Sangat is an Asian-based church worshipping Lord Jesus Christ. We reach out to local Gujarati community in Hero and Brent. We are grateful to Church Growth Trust for the building. It helps us to reach out to local community for Jesus. In all these examples and in many others, we have the privilege of seeing how the end of an era for one congregation does not mean that the gospel witness in that area is extinguished. There are other options to warehouse or wine bar. With or without physical alterations to the premises, we want to give gospel halls, chapels and other church buildings a new lease of life by working with local evangelical churches to provide them with a base for worship and outreach. Places of worship, which may have appeared to be redundant and heading for new housing or a carpet showroom, have been revived and put to new kingdom use. It is a huge privilege for Church Growth Trust to be involved in this recycling of kingdom resources and enabling the baton to be passed to the next generation that God is using to reach parts of the UK. Together they remind us of God's ability to do new things in every generation. If you know of or are involved with a place of worship where it seems that an era is drawing to a close, why not talk to us about how we can help you?